In the third video of the Sitecore Headless Development Training Series, we're going to look at the master page. But before we look at the actual master page itself, or how we structure the master page using page designs and partial designs, we need to understand how the ASP.NET Core solution structure is. So this is my sample solution structure, and this is coming from the MVP site, which I, again, believe is a great starting point for anyone who wants to understand a bit more around the new ASP.NET Core. So again, we're Helix compliant, so we have here the project foundation feature layer. If I go into the project layer, what we'll see is we have our program.cs and our startup, which are for any ASP.NET Core application uh, exist, and probably program doesn't really change that much. It has the create host builder, as well as, of course, using the startup to define where my startup CS is. Then we have our startup CS. This is where Sitecore has embedded a few uh, dependency injections for the configuring services. So we have, of course, our default uh, configuration. So one thing I want to show here that I usually do is in the out of the box scenario, you have configuration.get section, uh, which gets the Sitecore options uh, keys. Uh, which are defined based on a model called Sitecore options. So you have things like your layout service path, your instance URL, your default site name, API key, and so on and so forth. I will not be sharing this, uh, but all this is defined in the app settings. Um, next, if I go back to my startup, what we do, what I usually do is I actually have a config for the configuration itself as well. Uh, just to make sure that I can access the configuration. This is going to be especially useful in later videos where I use things like Microsoft Authentication uh, to be able to access these things as well. The next thing is just to go through the different things that we have here. So uh, again, these are very specific to what I'm doing for Microsoft Authentication. But what we do have is we add the Sitecore layout service giving it the default request options of site name and API key. Again, all this comes in the out-of-the-box template, so I don't want you to focus too much on what's there. I just want you to understand what that this does exist. The second thing that people will actually need to change or you'll need to change in your project is adding Sitecore rendering engine. And for each feature, you're going to add your own. So I have three features here, which are feature called basic content, a feature called navigation, and a feature called hero. Each one of them is being added here. And if I go into what this actually does is it adds options for the model bound and partial views, which we're going to discuss later when we go into creating components. But you just need to remember that any component you add must be added to the services and then add cycle rendering engine. And then we define here with experience editor to support experience editor. And again, you have to notice that Sitecore do advise that this is something that should be added for um, non-DMZ, for things that are within the DMZ, not for public sites. So we're going to discuss this later as well. And of course, here you can add Sitecore visitor identification as well. Next, we're going to go to the configuration, which is where we configure our app. Uh, again, here, if configuration.enable experience editor, we use the Sitecore experience editor, which was defined as a service at the top here. And of course, if it's development, if the environment is development, we use developer exception page. And this is actually for something else for Blazor, which is the WASM debugging or WebAssembly debugging. Um, and of course, we use request localization to support localization here. And we start defining our map fallback controller and our map sitecore uh, localized routes. And if I go to my default controller, this is the only controller we have here in the project. What this does is, again, ignoring this part for now because this is for something else. Uh, this is for Blazor client or Wasm, Blazor Wasm, which we're going to discuss later on. But what it does here is it gets the route and then gets the cycle rendering context from HTTP context and validates. If it does have errors, it does show it. Otherwise, it returns the view for the route. 
And this is how ultimately the page, the dynamic page is bound through the layout service. So let's run and so that we can further understand. And before we do that, let's have a look at the back end for this. So this is my news and website. I have a home news, news GraphQL, Blazor client and Blazor server. These are my different routes I have. So as soon as I run here, I'll actually add a debugger here. So I'll put a debugger in this point here. And you can see I'm actually running this as local host. So because it's communicating with the layout service to retrieve the data, and everything is running outside of the Sitecore context or our app is running outside of the Sitecore context, which I do believe is a great way in order to be able to scale without having to manage the Sitecore uh, servers, let's say, or having too many CDs. So this enables uh, much better scaling, especially when you're talking about customer portals or uh, intranet sites rather than maybe public websites. So again, going back here, and I'll just add a breakpoint in this point, uh, in this position here. So as soon as I click on news here, you can see that we have a route. And if I watch this route, it has my database name, my fields, uh, the name of the route, the placeholders within the route, which are my main header, main and footer. And each one of them, of course, has its own details like key and value. For the components that are within it and so on. So you can see that the layout service is being managed here and then the request itself comes back from Sitecore rendering context and then is routed based on the view to the required route. To load whichever page we have. Now again this is all about how we structure our layout. So let me go to the index, which is our first or our default view. So remember here, our default controller is re uh, returning view of route. And since we only have one page here, which is the route other than, of course, the error pages, it will always go to this page, which is taking the model route. And I currently have three placeholders here, header, main, and footer. Now, what happens is that this news page has a page design of default. And going to that page design here, this page design has header, footer, and empty as the three partial designs. So if I look at these partial designs here, you'll see that the header has a main nav component and the footer has nothing because I currently have not implemented it yet. And the empty is just the empty placeholder. Going back to my news, which uses the page design called uh, default, we can see in the final layout, I've added a hero, a page overview panel, and the news listing. And this is how the page is created. So you can see that this header is coming from the partial de design because that's the main nav in the partial design. And below that, this is the medium uh, banner. And below that, I have my, over, uh, my overview panel, which is holding this, and then the component itself, which is called news listing. So that's how the page itself is structured. And it's all based on this, these placeholders and layout service doing the heavy work for us or the heavy lifting for us to map them to all these different uh, components and render these components for us. Now, how these get mapped to each other is also one of the really important things we have here as we define our renderings. So if I go back here, into renderings and I'm going to detail this a bit more when we go through creating components but you can see that each I've opened the wrong one, um, each of our components has something called component name so for example here it's called content list and this is how the mapping happens Sitecore automatically knows that it has to look under um, within the renderings under components, Sitecore components, and then the component. And because we've already defined this mapping 
in the add model bound views for each one of them it already knows how to match them together and what model it needs to fill ultimately from the layout service data we're going to go into more details after we look at how to create the partial designs for header and footer and then we're going to look at how to create these components in more details thanks for watching